Okay, this talk is Packaging for Beginners by Gage Nagy, also known as Algernon. Yeah, something like that. Well, uh, the thing here is uh, 45 minutes is very short for teaching anyone how to pack it, uh, package even the most simple package properly. So uh, instead of, well, trying to teach you something which is impossible, uh, I will try to show a few examples uh, which hopefully uh, will show you how packaging can be fun and rewarding. And uh, in order to do so, I will start uh, with a little story. A little story happens in a wonderful and magical world where uh, wizards walk the earth. And in this little world, uh, there is a boy who has a fascination for computers. It just so happens uh, that on his computer he has a system, a free system with source code so many that he could uh, spend centuries reading it and he would still not be bored. Well, as it happens, this boy uh, over the years developed the fascination for developing free software for this system and one day, when his little sister entered the room and asked him to ride her a pony, he did so, and this program was so awesome that years later, his sister, who is using the same system, uh, wanted to surprise his brother, uh, who in the meanwhile became a Debian, de uh, Debian developer, and uh, she wanted to package this little pony. And this is what I will show you, how she did so. But first, let me show you the pony. It's a very simple uh, program. Your standard configure make, make install style thing. Configure make, and it does the rest. And I will show you what it does. Well. I already built it, and this is the pony. Awesome, isn't it? Well, this is the program we will package. Little sister already set up a directory where this program is. Uh, well, that's the source code. So how do we start? We have an up upstream source code we can build it, we can install it, and it just works, but we want a Debian package. So we do the obvious and extract it, if I remember the command. Well, same thing over again. There we go. Little sister read somewhere that in order to build a Debian package, you need to invoke the dpkg-build uh, package command. Oh. Wow, OK. Just, just a second, yeah. I'm moving the podium so yeah. you won't hide it. Wait. Oh, sorry. And you won't have the projector in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great relief. Well, as you see, we ran the package and, uh, well, it kind of threw us an error that it can't find the Debian slash changelog file. Hmm, maybe we should make one. We could look at another package or copy it, but instead I will cheat a little bit and invoke this command called dch, which is supposed uh, to be used to update uh, Debian changelog files. It's also very helpful because it immediately told us that we can use the uh, dash dash create uh, command uh, to create that file. And when I use that, it can't find the directory, so let's make it. And run it again. There we go. Ah, oh, well, one moment. 
I'll fire up a different editor. Oh, this is a little bit better. So we, this is the template for a, a change log. We fill it out. It's version zero. And we're supposed to release it into a stable. Uh, I could also fix the name, but that would take a little while because I didn't figure out how sister is called. So let's just leave it, it, leave it, it with that. OK, so now we have a change log. Let's see what build package throws in our face again. Well, OK. Uh, the main error here is that there is no Debian control file. This Debian control file is uh, the file that uh, tells the build uh, program uh, certain information about the package, such as uh, which section it is in, which priority it has, uh, what is the source file called, uh, what binary packages it builds, because you can have a single source package and build as many binary packages from it as you wish. Uh, in our example, we want to build one simple binary package, uh, so we will write the control file accordingly. And as we do so, I will try to explain what different fields mean. Uh, OK, so first, uh, the, uh, the Debian control file uh, looks a little bit like an email. It has fields and it has values. Uh, the first block of fields describes the source and as such, we tell it that the source is called Pony. And, well, the Pony is not really useful, so we put it in the game section. And it's not that important a package, so we set the priority to extra. Well, for a start, let's say that's enough for a simple source, and we need to build a binary package, and we want to call it Pony. And since it's a compiled uh, program, we need to set the ar architecture to any. Uh, you can set the architecture, well, if it's a compiled program, it's best to set to any in the beginning. Uh, if it's a script or something like that, you can set it to all, which means it will be architecture independent. If you know it will only compile on a certain subset of art architectures that Debian supports, you can list that there. Uh, the next thing is coming up with a description for this package. And, well, draws a pony on the screen. We also need a long description. And let's see if this is enough. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, oh, oh, much better, thank you. Well, it doesn't complain about the control file anymore. Now it complains that it can't find Debian rules. Well, what is that file? Debian rules is the file uh, that tells DPKG build package how to assemble uh, the Debian package we want to build. Uh, it needs to have a, so, well, basically it's a make file. Um, it needs to have a certain set of targets uh, to build a package, to install it to the right place, and uh, 
to build a Debian package out of that whole thing. Uh, I will not go into details uh, how this works. I will just show a very, very simple example, which should be uh, enough for the vast majority of uh, simple packages, such as the one we are packaging now. And when I mean simple, I really mean simple. First, the shebang line. And this is the trick. Let me spend a, f a few moments explaining what th uh, this does. Uh, there's a helper package called Dep Helper, uh, which is meant uh, to make it easier to package uh, software into Debian. And it has a so-called uh, short mode, or DH mode, which pretty much works on a do-what-I-mean basis. And uh, it automatically tries to figure out uh, what you want. It looks at the source code, uh, figures out that, hey, it's built with autoconf and automake. I, can, I know how to build it. I know how to install it. And pretty much, it does everything for you. Now, I must stress that uh, using this is convenient, but uh, if you end up packaging, or better say when you end up packaging, uh, in the long run, you really do want to know uh, what is behind these commands. Uh, I will not go into that today, because that is a very long story and it is well documented. Uh, let's just say that this works and is easy. And we make this file executable and see what happens. Wow, a lot of things happen. It's just building the package. But it's also complaining about this compatibility level 5 or something. What the hell is that? Well, thankfully, we have a man page, and we, have, we can search for compat. Hmm, there's this Debian compat thing. So I will cheat a little bit again, and instead of going through the man page, I will tell you that in order to use the short form, uh, you have to put an 8 into this uh, Debian slash compat file, because Step Helper has different compatibility levels, so it can remain backwards compatible with uh, former versions. So we do something like this, and try again. It builds again. And magically, it stopped complaining. Well, it does complain about my keynote phone, but that's expected because it's not on the laptop. Let's see what happened. Well, look at that. What we have here. We have a package. So let's try installing it and see if it works. It works. Magic. <laughs> However, we're nowhere near finished yet. Uh, not by far. This is just a package. But once you start to use tools which help you make your package better, such as Lintian, well, this will be embarrassing. Yes. It is embarrassing. Let's try this so it doesn't try to sign it. Hmm. 
missing maintainer. Why didn't I notice that? OK, let's fix that. Well, as it turns out, every package needs to have a maintainer. So we write one. This will be me for the moment. And rebuild as usual. Let's see. Well, this takes a little while. But, oh my god, that's a lot of errors and warnings. Well, let's go over uh, these warnings and what they mean. Uh, first of all, each package uh, should have a build dependence, uh, build dependency field in Debian control. That field describes what other packages this one needs in order to be built. Uh, every tool you use during the build, except a few, and uh, everything else uh, the package depends on during build needs to be listed there. So, for example, since we use dip helper, that needs to put into uh, the build appends field. And since we use version 8 of dep helper, we need to make that build dependency version. Uh, I didn't tell it in the beginning, but, uh, well, never mind, we'll get to that later. Let's just add dep helper for a start. Build append. And rebuild. Let's see what it says now. Well, it's a little bit less uh, errors this time. And yes, uh, another thing I forgot to put into uh, the control file is the depends uh, field. Uh, every binary package, or well, every package where it makes sense, uh, needs to be a depends line, which uh, is a bit similar to build depends, except that it lists the packages, uh, the package depends on. Uh, one, uh, once it is installed. So, for example, we ne need not put dip helper there because the package doesn't use it. Uh, there is a trick uh, when using dep helper and, well, basically any other uh, helper uh, that can figure out what are the libraries uh, one program is linked against. And I will show you that trick right now. So we need a depends line. If we put this here, while building the package, this will be expanded to the list of the uh, libraries uh, the binary we just built depends on. We don't need to know, and we don't need to expl uh, explicitly list all that stuff here. It's uh, so this makes it a lot easier, and we rebuild again and see what happens. And hey, I have a question. Yeah. In the meantime. I'll run Lintian again. So this, sure. There's all these Lintian warnings you've got. Is there a web page that lists 
what these mean? Or is there uh, like... Uh, yeah, uh, there is a web page somewhere which I forgot, but you can do Lintian info and it will hopefully tell me how to proceed or maybe not. I think it was D. Oh, okay. Yeah, indeed, this tells a lot more about uh, what each tag means. Yeah, a good idea is to uh, go through these descriptions when uh, packaging a, a piece of software, and you can work your way up uh, from doing something simple like we did uh, to having a Lintian Clean package. Uh, which is a pre-requirement for any package uh, entering Debian nowadays, thankfully. And, uh, yeah, I think that was most of what I wanted to tell. Uh, basically, as I've shown, uh, doing a very simple package is unbelievably easy. And we have a lot of tools which help make this package better, which have both good, docu uh, good documentation and they have very nice uh, output which helps you make the package better. And you can make your way up, the, uh, up from that to end up with a really nice package. So if there are any questions, then please shout. If I said anything stupid, then please beat me to the ground. Well, I think one of the most important uh, points that uh, you illustrated is that every uh, Debian developer or maintainer or, or whatever will have his different way of doing things, and yes. everyone will know a different set of tools. And yes. there is no <laughs> single way to show things, no simple way to present. Uh, that is correct. That is correct. So. Uh, as many de developers there are, there are as many ways to do packaging. There are common points, but yeah. I have another question. Uh, is there a way to know what's inside the dev package that you created? Yes. I know the answer. Uh, well, the very easy uh, way is to launch Midnight Commander and just look inside it. There are certainly better ways, but this is convenient. Uh, basically, the dev package has uh, two parts. Uh, it has the real contents, which at the moment is our binary package, uh, binary software, and a little bit of documentation, which at the moment consists of the Debian changelog. Uh, the other part of the dev package is the various uh, control information uh, the control file we created, or at least part of it. Uh, as you can see uh, somewhere here, uh, the depends line. Uh, in the source, we used a variable there, and the build process expanded it uh, to what you see above. And, well, the dev package contains this, uh, contains uh, various other files such as uh, pre and post installation scripts and uh, things like that. Any other question? Yes? Yeah, hi. So I'm new to contributing, and before coming here, I tried to learn how to package stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem I have with this is because there's lots of information around, and there are lots of ways of doing it apparently. So I was wondering if someone from the audience, or you perhaps, can personally recommend a tutorial which has a uniform method of doing it because uh, there, are, there is lots of information and I can't make sense, right? So, uh, much like I think uh, the K and R of packaging, so as to speak, yeah. Yeah, um, 
I would suggest uh, first forget about documentation at the start, because as you said, there is a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, instead, I would suggest have a look at packages, a uh, few simple ones, and try to copy it and uh, try to change it uh, until it works for you. Uh, what you want to package and uh, read the documentation when you encounter a problem or if something really doesn't make sense then you can find the appropriate documentation either in the DBM policy or the new maintainers guide or the developers reference or uh, Lucas I think now bombs uh, packaging tutorial uh, both of these documents are awesome but all of them are pretty big and uh, hard to digest at first. So I would suggest do first, read after. Uh, however, uh, when you are about to uh, upload a package to Debian, before that, make sure that it's really in a good shape. I just want to quickly say that the new maintainer's guide has been being revised a lot in the past year and two years, and I think it's actually very high quality. The most important thing with any piece of documentation is to stick with it from beginning to end and not to swap from one tutorial to the other, which I do all the time. Yeah. So, new maintainer's guide. Well, another piece of advice I might give is to look at a recent package version. If you look at you know, several different ones, they all look rather different and they're very confusing and you wonder why there are different ways of applying patches. So use a recent and small package. Two, uh, two comments. First of all, uh, um, after that I will show you uh, a few more additions to the packaging. And the new maintenance guides is really recommended. Um, and even experienced developers work with it because they forget stuff, for some, sometimes forget the, the right syntax, or sometimes just want an example. So it's good for beginners and experienced people. Um, I would do, I would read it once, although you might not understand everything, then start to package and return to the guide because once you read it, some of the bits will already be in your head and you can return to a specific part. And we, it will be easier that way. If there are no other questions, then I'll give the, oh, sorry. I'm the intruder here. I wrote the new maintainer's guide. <laughs> so I first let others speak for it. Uh, just listen to Google. Type how to build the Debian package into Google, and the first Debian.org result is it's okay. It will work. So, okay, mic works. Um, I'll do a few additions to the tutorial we just had. Um, please be patient with me because it's in Hungarian keyboard with English layout and it's not my laptop. So, um, I wanted to show you, first of all, a few additions. Uh, one of them, let's see where we are. Where's the minus key? This one. Oh, thank you. Okay, the first, it's really hard when you don't see what you type. Whoops. First of all, it's, you can get information about the package um, without ch checking its contents with the package. And you can see, take your trick, that this was the line that we had uh, with uh, uh, Schlieb's uh, Depends. Um, another one that the, all the dev files are actually archived, 
archived files and sometimes have sub archives. So you can use anything that shows uh, uh, these formats to show the uh, package contents. But another option is again to ask the package to help you and get a look at least of the files that would be on the file system which are not the control files. As we saw before, there are a few parts that are not shown here, which are the uh, uh, control files, the MD5 sums, and the uh, maintainer scripts, the post install, pre install, and the same for removal. Regarding the rule files, this is. Yep. Okay. Um, this is compatibility version 8 of the rule files. And for my taste, it's a bit too automatic and too short. Uh, I prefer to work with the um, largest or more expanded version. i just do a build for a second. You can see that during the process, there are a lot of DH programs that are run. So this is what uh, the black box actually does. It, it runs a lot of smaller scripts, which each one of them has a unique uh, role. I'll take an example. Yes, yes, you are correct. I'm just used to Vim. Okay, this will be um, the previous version of the rule files and actually has all the targets that the automated um, DH uh, actually runs. It has a few targets, the main ones, it, this is a, a template, so this is the reason for all these lines with um, hash before them. We have the build, the build target, which calls build stamp. I won't go with you over the whole rules files and how it works, but just to give you a general uh, orientation of the file. So the main target we here have here is build, clean, install, and usually binary, which actually causes the package, uh, takes the files into a Debian package. There's a, a way As we saw earlier, the Debian rule files is actually has as, uh, execution permissions. So we can run it and it will work. And we can specify uh, one target. So we won't do the whole process, but, but just the one we want. Let's do clean first and then. So for example, if we have build problem of the package, we won't need the whole process just to figure out um, where's the build problem because if the build fails, the rest will fail also. This will be easier way to find why the program is failing. In this case, it won't fail, but um, it will help us debug. Then we can run Excuse me. The install part. Okay. So this would be a good option to explain about fake root. Um, usually, installation is done uh, as root because the uh, make install program thinks we are going to install to the real uh, location, which is usually slash usr uh, bin or whatever directory and they're all only writable with root permissions. To circumvent this problem, we use fake root, which 
tells the program, it's okay, you're root, you can write to, the, to that location. And the program thinks, okay, I'm root, I'll just write it. And this way we can package stuff in our home user, whatever the re directory we have, without actually messing with the actual system we're using. This is very healthy uh, situation for building, uh, because sometimes uh, you might have a package install its files and overrun the system's com um, programs or mess with the configuration or uh, a lot of things that you won't, that you won't want it to do uh, on the actual system. So running it as, as your own user is the best practice. Just going up to the history. Okay. Let's show you. The actual files are written inside the Debian directory. And the files are written to the to a directory called as the same as the package. In our case, Pony. And you would see it has also the Debian part, this one and also the user part. So this is the actual files that are going on the file system, and this is the Debian control files. If we use the command, the find command to see the layout, and then compare it, you see it's actually the same. Okay? Well, except for the, for the Debian directory, I mean this one, which the dpackage minus C won't show you. Well, with more complex packages, we actually have another directory that all the files are written to there and then move to uh, another place depending on which, of, which sub packages they should relate to. Um, a few more things I wanted to show you. First of all, during the changelog file, we have um, this part. This is the best way we use changelog to close bugs. And probably you won't encounter it at first, but when you, your package will be uploaded, um, I hope you won't get any bugs, but in the case you will, the next changelog entry should mention close, closes uh, and the bug number. Uh, the format here is really important, so if you forget the two dots or the hash sign, it won't close the bug. The plus side is if you write the format correctly, the bug will be automatically closed upon upload and you, want to, you won't need to do anything manually. We have a very similar format if you want to close bugs in Ubuntu. So when the package moves from Debian to Ubuntu, it can also close bugs in Ubuntu. For example, this is the way I, I also monitor my bugs in the bugs of my packages in Ubuntu. And if there's a fix, I just mentioned bugs from both bug tracking systems. We can use the DCH, oh, let, let me first, the previous part. We had install and then, just to show you it works. So we don't have any deb file and this would actually create a deb file. So we can do the, the whole build process step by step and to sh see what it actually does. And it's easier to repeat steps uh, after we make fixes instead of rebuilding the whole package. Sometimes the compilation part takes a lot of time and there's no need uh, to repeat it uh, time over time if you're only changing, for example, where the files will be. Um, there's a few tools that could help you. They come from, uh, it's called dev scripts package and it has a lot of uh, helper scripts which would make your life easier. One of them you saw earlier, which is called DCH. And for example, if we want to add an item to the changelog, again, sorry for the, oh, yeah. Let 
Let's try again. Okay. So we see it already opened the changelog file. It added an asterisk so we can start our own new uh, entry. And it also updated the timestamp. Okay, it's very easy and very convenient. Next, we would decide we want to have uh, a newer version of Pony, and we would use uh, DCH minus i, i is increment, and we'll get a newer version. Okay, so we jump from Pony version 0 to, to Pony version 1. Another thing, Sorry, I'm not used to it. Okay, we were still with version zero. Um, sometimes uh, the package, the upstream we have is Debian specific one, and sometimes it's a more general uh, program which can go to a lot of distributions. Uh, and on top of that, we'll actually add the Debian directory and all its files. So we want to have uh, a separation between what came from upstream and what came from Debian. And if we take a look again at the result file, we can see that we only have um, a deb package and the upstream source. In this case, and this version in scheme, actually we choose zero, we can only have these two. This means the package is Debian specific. It usually goes for packages written by Debian people for Debian, and in most cases they are irrelevant to other uh, distributions. If we want a Debian, a general package, we need to add a versioning to the, to the package. Well, the zero here means the upstream version and the minus one, or actually the one, means the Debian subversion. So when the next time we try to increment the version here, it will go to 0 2. So it's the same upstream version, but Debian has another uh, version of the package. Let's say a new version. OK or better yet, just fix something. Okay, so the next time, actually, then we'll get another error, probably. How much time? One minute, okay, let's do it fast. So this time you can see that for version uh, 0-2, we got a binary package which has a different name. And I'm missing something, yeah. And a tarball just for the, uh, for the version. So don't mix between this one and this one. They are not the same. Just to show you the difference, Okay, this will be the upstream files. You could see this is the source. And that would be only, yeah, okay, no, excuse me, because we have to rename the source, the upstream uh, file, and we won't have time for that, yeah. Um, quick questions before we finish, yes. When using the Deb Helper uh, version 8, can you selectively override targets? Um, yes, you can, but uh, it's a bit more complicated. And this is the, the, the reason I prefer the previous version, because it's much more simpler to, to, change, to have changes in it. Okay, especially for beginners, 
and you can just go to the exact point of the problem and do the change, except instead of trying to figure out how, how the automated system works and where to put the right hook so something else will happen. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank you very much.